Hey everybody, gonna install the CarPlay in my 2014 Mazda 3 that I just got. And that's the hub that's popping out. Very simple, just get, just get the tool in between there and it pops right out, folds back. And coming up, you're gonna see the dashboard that needs to be removed. Um, I'm sorry, not the dashboard, the blower vents and the little thing to the right, um, you pop open the glove compartment and you're able to get your hand underneath the right side. Just pull very gently and it, it will pop out right about there. It starts popping out. Keep going all the way across and then it will see, pop out and there's going to be a cord right there in the center behind the hazard light. Um, that screw you see back there is the um, screw that you're going to undo and there, there was the cord. Uh, I was going to try to go to the left but I, I didn't do that. I went to the right and behind the um, glove box which you don't have to take out so do not take it out unless you want to but I would um, and that center console also pops out uh, so there's that hazard light clip and then you can see the sewer thing in the back and here I am um, I just popped it took a little pressure and then unscrewed it make sure you put a, a towel there not to screw up your dashboard or let the screw fall down the, the wind pipes um, the blower pipes so you, get, you do have to worry about that. And it comes out fairly simple. Just keep hold of that screw. screw. Um, and then pull on the, uh, the headset. And it does break free. I only had one hand, so I couldn't do anything else. Here's all the cords. You're not going to wind up putting that green cord back in. You put in your other cords. That blue cord is the one that's going to be a pain. But uh, once you get it in, it works fine. The clips are located on top of the um, connectors and that's on all the connectors in, in the vehicle um, it, it works to have a fingernail on your thumb um, seem to come out easy now here's the glove box I did fold it down you pull, pull the, push the sides in it folds farther down and then I fed the cords behind it through the up through the hole and you can reach back right where I'm at and you can feel them when they pop through and just pull them out there they are and I put some foam on there to keep them together. But you can see you don't need to pop out the uh, entire glove box. Um, now I'm going to jump those cords behind. And there they are coming out. So you just feed them behind, let it drop down. I did pop off that little um, fascia on the back, or whatever you call it, little panel on the bottom. You see it there. The cords are hanging down. And um, I, I was going to go to the left side, but I. It's easier to go to the right side. And uh, you're going to have to pop out the console there. You just grab a hold of it, pull it up, and it pops out too. Um, everything's very simple. Don't need to start taking everything apart like you see in other videos. Um, I was rather surprised. And I probably could have done this in 30 minutes. But the first time I did it, I did it in under an hour. Um, and here it's showing once I got the console out. I only had one hand. Um, free so I could film everything. Unbuckle the, uh, the little leather thing on the uh, handbrake. It has a little snap and then you just pull it out and point it out where uh, it goes back into. Um, and like I said I'm going to run the cords up underneath. So that should work out well, which it did. I'm kind of pointing out where there's a, a little uh, fastener right down there. And, uh, oh, this clip that holds the bottom of the, um, you know, for the controls on the console. The depress part, the clip of the fastener goes to the passenger side. That's what I'm pointing at. So when you put it back in, make sure it slides back in with the fastener or the, uh, the release to the passenger side. I had a problem with my door there. That real back part pops off, so um, I was able to put that back as well. Let's see what else is going on here. It's a picture just showing what's down there. There's the new unit. I did pop that back in the uh, the old unit. W once you take those those uh, fasteners off the bottom of the, I mean not fasteners, the, the little clips that pop out, then you. Uh, let's see, where are we at here? Oh yeah, here's the cords. And you can see there's that panel. And just pull on it. It, it literally just pops right out. There's three little um, 
guides right there. And when you put it back in, you'll see what I'm saying. Um, the panel's not attached to anything. So you're able just to, to put the cords in there, tuck them up, make it disappear. There's that little fastener I, I talked about. And you push from the inside and pull, and then um, you're able to unscrew it a little bit, and then push a little bit more, and it pops right out. And there's the cords. The cords went up into that well, and I pulled them through. I put the panel back on, and um, the very last thing I did was put that fastener back to tie it all down. Once I got the cords in there, there's lots of cords, so I, I took the uh, included um, zip ties, did a couple zip ties, and that's it. Don't need to do much. But uh, other videos show taking out everything going forward of the uh, the shifter, and you don't have to do that, um, including the shifter. And I, I didn't uh, I didn't have to do that. So it's simple. It was crazy. So there I am tucking it in, and it doesn't pinch. Um, you can put the foam tape on there if you'd like, but you don't have to. And there, that panel just pops right back in there. It's crazy. And there's the, the cords. There's the brown and the black uh, new attachment. And they just look at the, uh, the instructions, and it will show um, which where they go. Uh, but they do only go into one or the other. Um, one doesn't fit um, a hole, and it has to go in the other. There I am pulling that through. I had to straddle this area. I'm six foot four, so it's kind of a pain in the ass. But um, yeah, it's good to go. There it is, tucked up. And, and take that loose wire there and just push it up a little bit, and then you put the panel on. There's where the fastener goes. There's prior to hooking it all up. There's the zip ties. I just put one there and then one here. And I just put I just put the cords together. I didn't zip zip tie them to anything. There's the new unit snapped in there. The green one does not go back on, so there's that. You just pop it back in. And it's almost ready to go. I think I heard that the hub unit increases the uh, power. Uh, that, that's the main key for this thing. It gives you a higher um, higher flow, so um, everything can, can work. And then uh, here's putting the console in. I only had one hand again. Um, so this is going to cut out, but, but you just slide it back over. You can see that little wrap around that goes on the, uh, the handbrake. Just slide it on and then uh, you basically just push on it. Right here. It's on and then uh, you just push down on it and it clicks right in. Oh, and then, um, make sure you pull the map uh, SD card out of the old hub unit. Otherwise, um, and you're going to put that back in. Now here, infotainment, uh, they said to start the car up without that chip in there. Let it run for 10 seconds or whatever, however long it takes, and you're going to see what happens here. Uh, it does kick in. So it's just going through its cycle to check on everything. The Mazda's... Um, Sky Active or whatever the hell it's called. It, it, it just kicks in, starts up, and everything plays as normal. So your Mazda stuff works as well. Uh, you still got your radio and you got your navigation, uh, which is cool. And then you're going to go to Applications, and um, you're going to choose CarPlay. Now, I did a real bonehead thing, and I sat there and couldn't get it to work for a while. Uh, but that's because... Uh, I didn't plug the phone in to the actual hub. <laughs> I thought it was just going to work uh, with Bluetooth, but that's not the case. Um, 
Now here I am. I turned the card back off. I stuck the uh, SD card back in. Click it. Make sure it clicks in. I think it goes in reverse from what it, what it was in the other one. I'm not sure. Here, click it. Close it up. It's in there nice and tight. And there's a restart. And here's where I started to encounter problems. It wasn't, I, I couldn't get car to play to play. I thought it was by Bluetooth, but it's not. It has to be, uh, excuse me, it has to be uh, plugged in. Okay. And um, so I'm here at the community. And then you'll be able to choose cars it. running. And, oops, wrong one. Let's go um, home. Turn it over to applications. And the car play. I gotta turn CarPlay on. Okay, don't be an idiot like me. And I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, okay, how come I can't choose Apple CarPlay and it's, it went through not available, won't hook up or whatever, driving me nuts and I'm thinking, oh, I must have screwed something up, right? Well, guess what? <laughs> I, I didn't have a cord in here. I didn't put the cord in and I didn't plug the phone in. So now I'm gonna plug the phone in. Let's see what happens. Plug in the phone. Uh, allow CarPlay with Mazda while phone is locked. Allow. And there it is. It's working. I think. Anyway, at least it popped up. Let's see what happens here. So let's go. So there. We got a music thing set up. We'll give it a few seconds. Oh, that's iTunes. I don't do iTunes. Sorry. Well, let's see, do I have anything? I don't think I have anything in there. Playlists. My top rated recently played. Let's choose that. I don't have anything in there. <laughs> okay, so I, I don't even use it. So, let's see what happens here. I push this. So, apps, there we go. Music, news. Okay, sorry, I have no idea what, how to use this, but anyway, oh there, there's, there's something I do use. Okay. Yeah, so it works, you just can't play the music at the same time, but anyway, it, it's, uh, everything's working. Just made a phone call and everything, and uh, I'm happy, man, I'll tell you that. So screw all that uh, expensive stuff that they were saying to do, or have the dealer install it, that, that was outrageous. Anyway, simple install. You, I, I don't even really think you needed that. Uh, I, I ordered the thing for $105, the hub, and then um, I ordered like a $795 the thing to help pop off the dashboard and stuff. You don't even really need that, but uh, it's nice to have, I guess, just in case. But uh, not paying those exorbitant fees, they wanted to install it. And it went back quick. Oh, one last thing. Where is it? Right here. There it is. One last little do that. I forgot. This thing has to go back in there and it snaps back in there. But that's it. Have a good day, folks. Hi. So a couple add-ons. Um, the time I said you can't play the music. Well, I couldn't play the music while I was filming. So um, that's, that's what I meant by that. And this is a car hub purchased on Amazon for $105, I believe. And it comes with foam tape, it comes with the cords, it comes with good, well, instructions that tell you which sides to plug it into the unit. Um, it comes with zip ties. And I only use two zip ties and two pieces of foam. Um, but it's a very simple project, and I uh, wish you luck. If you have any questions, get hold of me. Thanks.